I think we'll just kick things off here, Jesse. We are here with Jesse Bartholomew, VP of Product at Coaster Cycles. Jesse, welcome to Cutting Through the Noise podcast. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, I wanted to kind of kick things off. I know Coaster Cycles talks a lot about the last mile, um, and I was hoping that you might, for our listeners, educate them on what does the last mile mean? Sure. Um, the last mile simply refers to what's really the most difficult and expensive part of delivering packages to those that have, have ordered them. So you, you click buy now and it shows up on your doorstep and it goes through a few different steps to get there. But within the industry, that last mile is, is always the most challenging, most expensive. And so there's a lot of effort around how to tackle that, how to make it less expensive, how to make it quicker. Uh, and overall better. So it's a, it's an industry term, but um, certainly one that's uh, got quite a bit of focus on it lately. Yeah. Seems like it is very literal in that way. Yeah. It's yeah. There's the also, last mile. Yeah. Right. There's also the first mile, which is also challenging and, oh. uh, you know, getting, getting some, basically moving packages from warehouse to warehouse or distribution center to warehouse, et cetera, to obviously it's, it's final destination. That's yeah, kind of what it's all about. Can you talk to us a little bit about how Coaster Cycles uh, fits into that last mile, and maybe even the first mile? Yeah, so we're we're basically trying to solve one of the one of the issues around last mile, which is um, a, a lot of cities and um, businesses being challenged with providing kind of zero emission uh, solutions or zero emission vehicles as part of that last mile. So one of the challenges is, um, you know, trucks and vans delivering in large dense cities, uh, contributing to uh, pollution, contributing to noise, contributing to traffic congestion, et cetera. And so um, we provide a solution to that in the form of an electric cargo trike. So imagine um, uh, an e-powered bicycle basically that can haul a fair bit of cargo and in effect replace a van um, or a truck in this last mile delivery equation. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of where, where we're focused and, 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 uh, and targeting. So obviously it's aimed at uh, larger entities or even um, government entities, et cetera, that are responsible for uh, providing these, these solutions or regulating these solutions. In the, yeah. Yeah, no small task, I would say, uh, for a city. And then it seems like, yeah, Coaster could fit, fit nicely into that solution. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned e-bike. Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit about that transition. Has it always been e-bikes at Coaster Cycles, or has that been a recent, um, a recent product shift? Uh, relatively recent. Um, Coaster actually started in 2005 as a pedicab company. Um, and they were at that time human power, one hundred percent human powered. Um, nice. <clears throat> obviously, e-bikes are an emerging trend for a number of reasons, but it, it just so happens that they fit perfectly within kind of this this last mile delivery category and and making the solution easier for those operating these bikes. And so, yeah, it's been um, been a, a, an interesting transition and. Uh, an interesting technology to to work with. We happen to be partnered with a company called Bosch, which is the the leader by far in this technology, both batteries and the motors themselves. So, um, lends itself perfectly to to our product. And I'm on your LinkedIn right now, and we're talking about coaster cycles. We're talking about bikes, and bikes has been a big part of your career. It, the only part, really. The uh, only part. I'm seeing a lot of <laughs> cycles. I'm seeing Trek. I'm seeing uh, Saris. Am I saying that correctly? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, um, yep. Yep. Every yeah, all the way through. Um, so I'm I'm guessing you have a passion for. Uh, I'm not going out on a, on a on a cliff here or on a. No. I'm not reaching to say you have a passion for uh, for cycling. Definitely not. Um, started you know riding my bike as a kid, obviously, and started racing in high school uh, and then through college. Actually, Saris was my first job uh, during college, which is a bike accessory bike rack company. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, I went on to, to track and, and it's one of those things where kind of trying to make the, the job or the career, your passion or, and, and vice versa. So it's, it's worked out well, um, for me in that regard. 
yeah, not a, not many can say they've aligned the two as as closely as it seems you have, which is really yeah. neat. Yep. How does Coaster differentiate from? I'm guessing this is the first e-bike experience you've had. A little bit. Uh, Trek, okay. Trek and SRAM both. Uh, well, Trek has e-bikes. They happen to use the Bosch system as well. Okay. So I've uh, got some experience with with e-bikes there. And um, yeah, you know, e- e-bikes depending on who you talk to, they can be a controversial thing. You often hear mm. pure cyclists claiming it's cheating or like it's, I don't know, it's somehow wrong or something, but um, it, that's a small, small, small fraction of, I think the overall okay. cycling population. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, you know, imagine taking all the challenges of riding a bike, whether it's not having a shower at work to, to take care of things when you, when you get to work after riding there or, just living in, you know, in, you know, poor terrain, like hilly terrain. And oh, I don't yeah. want to ride because it's too hilly. It's like all those excuses kind of go out the window and, and it opens up, you know, this kind of magical world of like, and, you know, getting, getting to A and B via, via bicycle. Um, even if it happens to be e-powered, like it, it just, it's, it's amazing. So, um, yeah. been, been really interesting to watch that whole trend take over the industry and now uh, work its way into even you know, potentially world changing initiatives like, like last mile delivery and, and, um, uh, solutions for, for zero emissions, et cetera. Yeah. I've heard a couple of the arguments on both sides for, for e-bikes, definitely the purists out there, all human power, 100%. They're convinced that's the only way to go, but it seems like if I, you know, you're familiar with Missoula, there's a big hill and a lot of houses on that hill. And yeah, if I lived up on that hill, I would definitely welcome an e-bike into the uh, transportation equation. It's not even a debate. It's 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 ridiculous to even consider it anything but a, <laughs> a, a perfect solution. Um, totally, yeah. Um, talk about just transportation in cities in general. I know uh, you know Coaster is dealing a lot with delivery, but when it comes to sort of the future of transportation, is that something that obviously Coaster Cycles is thinking about that? But is it? Um, you know, with that, with that zero emission, I'm just, you know, I'm thinking about um, self-driving cars. I'm thinking about uh, cities that have, I think we might have talked when we first met about um, streets because of the pandemic that have kind of shut down for open seating and they're not yeah. going back. They're not allowing vehicles through, but bikes can get through. So talk a little bit about how, and this is maybe a long way of answer, asking this question, but the pandemic has maybe shifted the future of transportation. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of converging things, I think, at the moment, whether it is just of kind of convergence on, on, on these issues, I think. And yeah, and it's kind of the start of a lot of it, too. Um, whether it's a large delivery company considering replacing vans with, with something else or, um, yeah, people wanting to maybe ditch their car a little bit more, at least yeah. days a week, ride, ride their bike to work, whatever. Like all this thing, all these things are kind of emerging and new. Um, and I think Coaster has been on the, the front end of that um, for, for quite some time now and arguably a leader in, in a lot of this. And so it's exciting and um, it, it's maybe TBD as far as where it could end up or, or what it could all entail when it's, when it's said and done for the time being. Like I said, we're, we've been focused on that that kind of last mile delivery aspect, but it doesn't take too much to to think about other applications or other interesting um, problems that, that this technology could solve in the long term. Totally, yeah, it is 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 it it is an exciting business thinking about some of those opportunities. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about your path to Coaster Cycles and how you you know landed this? great job in Missoula, Montana, and you're in Wisconsin, and there's this company that has a couple different headquarters. Um, your path to Coaster Cycles, how, okay. uh, yeah, how, how that came to be. Yeah, so uh, like I said, kind of spent my career in the, in the cycling industry, um, and actually through a connection in, in Madison, Wisconsin, where I'm based, um, who had a, uh, basically a design a design effort with Coaster in the past and in talking with them, uh, they've kind of mentioned an opportunity there and got to talking to, uh, to Justin and, and Ben, the Ben's the um, founder and CEO of Coaster and, and Justin's the COO in Missoula. 
and kind of hit it off and it just so happened they needed somebody like me. I've got, you know, a good amount of product development experience and a little bit of marketing experience as well. And so kind of fit in with what they were looking for uh, to grow the company, uh, keep growing the company, I should say, and maybe take it to the next step. Very cool. Our audience, a lot of them are sort of just getting out of maybe a, a master's program or just sort of entering the workforce, wondering, you know, okay, here's somebody with the title of uh, VP of product. Can you help people understand or like what, what, sk what skills should somebody have if they're interested in becoming a VP of product or what, what are some important things to know about if, if they say, I want to be a VP of product, what does that, what does that entail? Yeah, that's a tricky one. I, you know, it's not one of those uh, titles or, or things that you can necessarily go to school for that, that I'm aware of, although that is changing. Um, I would say people typically come at it from one of two angles or possibly both, but one would certainly be marketing, you know, a basic marketing degree um, or something that gives you some expertise or experience kind of uh, thinking about end consumers, whether that's um, B2B or B2C, like the, the end user um, and, and what problems they have and what solutions uh, they might be interested in or, or looking for. The other side would be engineering. Um, there's a lot of product or product managers that do come from an engineering background. Um, and of course now, you know, my background is primarily in, in hardware, but mm -hmm. um, a little bit of software and, and services experience, but obviously software is a, is a whole nother Right. Uh, realm that, that um, whether it's software development or, you know, typically the product manager has a pretty, pretty hefty role within software uh, product development. So either of those two fields would provide a nice foundation, I think, for, for product, um, product management, et cetera. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that'd be yeah, my quite very personal. general. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. definitely have to see, okay, VP of product, what's the company? Is it, Airbnb, they're probably doing software. Is it Coaster Cycles? They're probably doing some hardware stuff. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And more and more, it's becoming a little bit of both, I think. Um, yeah. There's, there's, it's hard to separate the two um, now. So. Interesting. Um, Jesse, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you were thinking, oh, you know, Kyle, I hope, I hope Kyle asked me about this on the podcast today. Um. No, I don't think so. I mean, um, no, I think we covered, covered the basics for sure. Um, and, um, yeah, I guess just that, that watch, watch for coaster cycles in, in the news. And, um, I think there's a lot to come from us. Uh, it's just, just kind of the beginning and, um, lots of, lots of plans for the future. So uh, exciting times for us. And, and we're, we're really eager to see things evolve in this whole category of last mile delivery. Very cool. And if people, listening want to you know potentially they're just graduating they want to reach out and see if there's any opportunities or find out more where where can they do that yeah you can obviously check out our website coastercycles.com and we're pretty active on linkedin and instagram um as well so at coaster cycles you can check us out there and um yeah it'd be great to uh touch base with anybody that's interested in learning more about us cool Jesse, thank you so much for joining us. This is, this is really cool. We'll make sure to link up to all of those uh, places that you mentioned in the job description or in the, uh, in the description of the podcast today. Excellent. And have a great day. All right. Thanks, Kyle.